Hello YouTube. Today we have a small game butchering video for you. It's farm raised rabbit. Okay, we raise them here on the ranch and butcher them all year long. Okay, uh, but I had some requests for this video and so we're going to show you how we do it in the house. There will be no killing of the animal on film or anything like that. That's already done by the time we kick it off. Uh, for those that may be a little more sensitive to that kind of thing. Not that I really give a shit how sensitive you are. Just, you know, I thought maybe, you know, the algorithm might kick me in the nuts or something and keep my video from popping up on searches or whatever. But uh, at any rate, you know, we kill our animals the most humane method possible, which to me is brain destruction, like immediate death. Okay, and then bleed them and hang them for five minutes and then we get straight to the butchering. They're a small animal. They don't need to hang for a long time. All right. Anyways, uh, I thought it would be more fun for you guys to watch my wife do it. Okay, she's way hotter than me and uh, she's been butchering small game for a long time. Big game as well. And so, you know, she definitely knows her ins and outs of it and she does it differently than I do it, you know, and... I, you know, I think it, I thought it would be kind of cool for me to see it again myself, the way she does it. Like maybe I'll learn something, which I actually did. You'll see in the video. And I think she might've learned something as well, you know? So, uh, yeah, that's it guys. We're going to get right at it. All right. Well, y'all asked for a video on small game butchering. So this is one of our farmed rabbits and this is my wife and she's going to show you how she cleans one. So these rabbits have been hit with what we call the brain basher. All right, I'll show it to you inside. First thing Christina here is going to do is hang this bunny up. And we use kind of like a bit of a homemade contraption. It's a piece of PVC with some wire going through it that gets hooked to each foot and then gets hung from a hook on the ceiling out in the field you could just use cordage that you've made wrap it around that those bunnies ankles right under their heel on the head side of their heel okay so that they're not going to slip off when you're pulling them down and you could also take a stick make a stick with a notch cut in both sides of it and put that right between its ankles you really want the legs to be held apart like you see behind me right now okay so first she's going to go around the legs and just cut the fur. Now, if this was like a commercial operation, we'd be careful not to cut through any of the meat bellies, but it's not, this is just for our own table. So we're not sweating it. We're more interested in, in getting the job done fairly quickly because we got a lot of stuff to do on the ranch, right babe? Oh yeah. Hot more bunnies to butcher too. Yep. Okay, next you go down through the inner thigh, just the, just the furs, which you're trying to get. And Christina and I both do it a little different. I usually pinch the skin closer to the crotch area and insert the tip of my knife and work my way up towards the ankle. But as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. While she's working on that, I'll show you my tools that I normally use. So this is the, bain, the brain basher. You know, it's just the piece of wood that I skinned and, uh, and oiled up. And this is my skinning knife. This is an old Red River that I got on eBay for like 40 bucks. Actually, excellent. But guys, fillet knives are awesome, okay? These things are super cheap. You can get them at Walmart. If I were you guys, I would actually get one of these with the shorter version. Stick it in your bug out bag, man. You can clean everything you kill with one of these so easily. Okay, so next she is going to pull the skin down. Probably call it the hide, right? On both of the legs here. Okay, now one of the cool things about this setup here is that you can be pretty hard on the hide. You can get this done a lot faster than if you were, let's say like, doing this at the side of a creek. So we've both cleaned a ton of small game out in the woods. And would you ever go back after doing it this way, babe? Go back to the woods? Well, no, go back to like cleaning a rabbit in the 
freaking sand on the side of a creek or, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now she's going to insert her knife and go right up in between the anus and the tail. So see the tail is attached to the hide. Okay. And she's just going to start working the hide down. Yeah, so lots of small game we've cleaned out in the field. Gets all kinds of grit in it, you know, and, and uh, you know, the hair gets all over the freaking carcass, and it's just a major pain in the ass. So you really want somewhat of a clean surface you can work on. And doing it like this also, guys, think about this. My wife's head is straight up and down, okay? So she's... You know, going to be a little more cognizant if some. Oh, <laughs> wow! That's not a first. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, so she just made it take a pee pee, squeeze the good heart. Now she's cracking the wrists in the front, and then she's going to cut around all the way around to cut the hide. Okay, and it's pretty simple to break these wrists. All right. Well, see, she does it differently than me. I don't do that yet. And you, babe, you grew up butchering rabbits, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we well, had animals on the farm. Yeah. Lots of rabbit butchering for Christina growing up. So one of the things you got to be careful about when you're pulling the hide down is, uh, especially with these farm-raised rabbits, you want the fat to stay attached to the carcass. Yeah, especially that upper back fat there. There's also fat on the belly. You're not going to see this a lot of times with wild rabbit. Uh, a lot of times they're, they're super lean, but you will see it at certain times of the year. But you want to keep that fat on the body. Okay, so she's just going to keep working here. got to use your knife if you can all right keep that fat on there there's we've noticed with the different breeds of rabbit sometimes that fat will really try to stay attached to the hide right babe like with the rexes oh yeah whereas these are uh, mm -hmm. new zealanders right here and uh, the fat seems to stay attached to the body a lot a lot better okay so you can see how christina is just gripping the skin and pulling at the same time, holding onto the body. She doesn't want another golden shower though, so you know she's she's not squeezing the the body cavity. Okay, and then she's just gonna make sure she can get a hold of the arm. Okay, and so she does this a little differently than me too. She's going to get hold of that arm and then just yank the wrist out through the hide. Bing. There we go. Okay. Now she's going to keep working her way down for a little bit more. Okay. And then she's going to cut the hide free. So basically, you pull it up until it's just about at the base of the ears. Yeah, you guys see that now? Okay, before she started cutting that hide. Boom, the hide's off. Okay, breaking the neck and then cutting through it. See, I go all the way around with my knife and then twist the head off. Ta-da! Okay, and I actually gut the animal before I remove the head. So that's another little difference there. Okay, so up here, I'm going to get up in here so they can see what's going on here. So she's making a little incision there, right in front. There we go. Now you can do it this way and not cut open the gut bag, guys. You just have to be careful. I do it the same way she does it. And then right here, I actually insert my fingers into the cavity on the spine of the knife and work it downward. So she does this a little differently than I do too. Okay, I got the guts coming out. Okay. 
Okay. So this is another difference. I, I free the anus up first. Oh. You're getting poop in there. Mm-hmm. No? Nope. No, it stops right there. Okay. What you basically do is free up the anus. You work your knife around it. Okay. Right in between the tail and the anus. And on all sides. Okay. And then this part excites me right here. If she stuffs it down in there. Nothing like watching your wife stick her finger up a carcass's butt. <laughs> well, someone doesn't like it. Do we need to lube it up? <laughs> <laughs> Man. And then you guys will see the little clump of fur around the butthole is going to come right out into, into the cavity here. And something else, we leave the kidneys on the carcass. That's the kidneys right there. They add a little flavor when you cook it. So next, there's a diaphragm muscle in here. She's going to get in there and pull that out. A treat for the dogs. Okay. Same with the liver. A lot of dogs will like the liver and the heart is down in there as well. Freeing up the diaphragm. And did you already pull the esophagus? Did it come right out? It came off with the head. So okay. we're good. All right, cool. Okay, so now she's going to take it off the hanger here. And you guys can see she just dropped the liver and the heart right there on the counter. So like I said, you you know, you definitely could use this method in the field. You just have to use it with some natural materials. But it's going to keep your game out of the dirt, uh, which, in my opinion, is just awesome. And like I said as well, it's going to keep your head straight up and down instead of you bent over looking at the ground. A little bit more situational awareness. Okay, so on the liver, there is a little gland. You guys can see that there's a veiny end, which is the end on the left, and the right is where the sac ends. So to peel it off, okay, you do that differently than I do as well. I grab it from the bag end and pull it towards the vein. Okay. Cool. Then we rinse the rabbit off and we're done, guys. And she did that in under 10 minutes. Good job, honey. <laughs> All right, you guys are in for a treat now, okay? Well, so, well, so she's gonna wash it. And you know how that's gonna be. One of the things you need to pay attention here is hair that will get kind of stuck up on some of the membrane. Uh, yep, definitely make sure you get the bee hole really good there, okay? And just wash the inside out uh, well until it's basically running clear okay you're not getting any pink out of it and that's that's it guys all right so one of the 
probably the biggest difference that I between how Christina does it and how I do it is I'll free up the anus here and then slice the body cavity over so I have access to it. And then I will tuck this down. Okay, into the cavity. Sometimes you gotta use your pinky. Might have to use a stick if it was like a cocktail or something. But I straight up come in here, right here, pull out that little powder puff ball, right? And so I know I got the intestines are intact here. And then I'll go ahead, this one's fatty, and go ahead and start bringing it down. All right. And then I continue the same way you did. Okay. That's it. All right. Something else that I didn't really go over when I was filming Christina is how to break the hind ankles. Like the front ones just twist off real easy. And these do too, if you got any strength, but the easiest way is to just take them like this and break them inwards, right at the ankle, just like that, okay? So again, just take them straight inward, just like that. And then you're gonna get in here with your knife and work your way around the bone. If So see how easy that is? And really, you know, if these are going in a freezer bag like they are for us, you don't want sharp bones on the ends because they'll cut holes in your freezer bags. Okay, but if you're out in the woods, who gives a shit, right? I got a real treat for you guys, yeah. too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's, that's all right. So, these, uh, these rabbit livers, man, like right out the bunny. I'm not kidding you. Mm. This is the way to eat liver. You don't even need to cook this shit, man. It is freaking good. All right. There you have it, guys. Obviously, we do things a little bit differently, but it works, you know? And we both agree it's the gut bag and the intestines is what you really don't want to pop inside of an animal. And let's talk about that for a minute, okay? I've talked to hunters that are like, ah, I didn't. I didn't eat the animal, it was ruined, I gut shot it. And we're talking like deer and shit, you know? And, you know, I'm going like, what about the whole front half of the animal? You know what I mean? What a waste, okay? And then you got to think about this, right? Because everything on this channel is about what would you do in shit hit the fan, right? Or prepping for shit hit the fan, right? So... You're balls deep in the freaking apocalypse, man, and you gut shot a rabbit, are you not going to eat it? Hell no, you're going to eat that shit, right? And let's say that operational security dictated that you couldn't clean that animal right away, because we're going to use this as a, as a quick little scenario, okay? You get back to your camp, you finally clean this animal up hours after you shot it, you're going to go through the body cavity, you're going to rinse it out really good, you're going to use your fingers and try and pick anything that looks like you know, it could have been intestinal related out of the inside of that animal, right? If there's any discoloration of the meat and it's making you nervous, cut it out, cook it on the fire, feed it to your dog, okay? Then you're going to cook that animal as though you were like boiling water, right guys? Because why do we boil water out in the field? Well, I'm going to get into this later. It's going to blow y'all's mind, man. A lot of the, the, the experts have this shit all wrong about boiling water all the freaking time, okay? But people boil water because they're worried about parasites and bacteria in the water that's going to get in their body and jack them up, right? Okay. The same thing applies to game. People just don't like to think of it that way, but it's true, okay? And fire cleanses all things, dudes. Okay, if you got a rabbit that you got shot or even larger game, you got some meat that you're a little bit concerned about, you know, and, but you're starving, you're going to freaking die. You know what you do? You cook the shit out of it. That's it. Just cook the shit out of it, man. Stew the shit out of it. Okay. Not until the point where it turns into freaking like mush in the pot, but you know what I'm saying? Cook it really, really well. You have to have that meat heat up to the temperature of boiling water for a period of time, obviously, to kill any parasites and bacteria, right? Just like you would water, 
okay? But once you've done that, you're safe, guys. You can eat it, okay? So that's it. I hope that, like, you know, that the that the freaking off-grid bushwhacker approach to some, some shit, like, kind of helps some of y'all out or, or gave you a different perspective on meat that could possibly be spoiled. Because it's going to matter. It's going to matter, man. When it gets hard, every little calorie is going to count, okay? So that's it, dudes. Hey, do the three things that every YouTube personality asks you to do. Check out my Patreon page. Think about becoming a patron. You know, I'm going to have a lot more interaction with people on there uh, than anywhere else, okay? And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.